Just let's start by looking back at Tuesday, the boring words. Was it a feeling of relief leaving with a point? Um, obviously, when we went, when we went there, we, you know, we were going for the three points. You know, we thought we were capable of going on and, and winning the game uh, there. But obviously, the start wasn't great. Um, so you look probably look back at it now and you think it's a good point to earn earned away from home at a tough place to go you know they're a good side they've got some good players so you know you look at it coming the end of the season it's probably it's probably a point game rather than two dropped we heard from uh, Mark Ellis last week speaking about the meeting that you players had yeah. with that management there just talking about things I know you're not going to go into the, the intimate details but what was the general feeling of that meeting positive yeah um, obviously you've got lads who are a lot you know more vocal in the changing rooms um, you know like get their points across and stuff but you know, all the way from the young lads all the way up to the most senior pros we've got here, you know, everyone had their, had their say and I think, it, you know, it's good that in times, you know, to obviously hear your opinion and stuff like that because when you've got such a big squad sometimes it gets muffled under, you know, what everyone else is saying. So I thought for us to be able to sit down as a group and everyone listen to what each other said and take everything on board, it, you know, it was, a, it was a real positive for the team. As journalists, we obviously take everything that's happening on the outside um, yeah. and we are on the inside. Um, in terms of the feeling within the squad in this kind of tricky period where goals have been hard to come by, there's been a few defeats here and there. Um, what's the feeling amongst the squad? No, it's, it's positive. You know that we're always upbeat. You know we've got a, a great change rooms full of full of good characters and stuff. You know we, you know we, we've still got plenty of games to go. You know we take one game as it comes. You know every game's a cup final. You know, especially in the second half of the season, you know, we're, we're looking to get as many points as we possibly can on the board. Um, you know, football's football, you know, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. That's just the way it is. Um, you know, we need to try and, you know, stick together, put a good run together maybe over the next 10 games and, you know, keep an undefeated, you know, record going now. You know, we've got two games on the spin, you know, four points out of six. Let's go and make it seven out of nine on Saturday, you know, and then start building some momentum because, you know, like you say, last season, it was pretty much similar to how this season's gone, and then we hit a great run of form at the probably the most important time of the season. You know when it's the running. So uh, the positives, uh, you know, lads are all positive. We're all we're all upbeat. We're we're looking to uh, go on another run now and, and really push us push up us up the table. We know that lots of fans demand and expect success in this division um, mm-hmm. in in a behind closed doors environment. Um, can you still feel that same level of pressure when they're not there? Yeah, to, to be honest, the amount of pressure we like we put on ourselves to to be good, and you know, it's a, it's a it's an honour to wear the shirt in Notts County. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 a massive club, and you know, to have the uh, opportunity to wear the shirt, I think every player puts pressure on themselves to perform at the very best every week. Um, you know, sometimes good's not good's not good enough. Do you know what I mean? Like you need to be exceptional if you want to go and and do well. So, um, you know, I think uh, I think pressures good thing to have in football I think it brings the best out of you um, you know when you're not under pressure you kind of sit back relax and think you've got it you know in your stride but a bit of pressure doesn't hurt anyone so like you say I think us not having the fans here with us at the minute obviously due to Covid and stuff it's probably has hampered our home form as in you know the fact that you know you know if you're not having a good game they'll let you know and then that eggs you on do you know what I mean and it's like come on get yourself sorted let's let's go again you know sort the next pass out or the next tackle or the next other and if you're having a good game they obviously get get on your back as well and really push you forward so I think you know the home form this season hasn't been great but I think you know we're not making any excuses but I'd like to think when we can get fans back in you know that'll, that'll pick up It's been such a disruptive season in so many ways have you managed to enjoy it at all or is there perhaps a feeling of going through the motions when, when football is the way it is right now. I enjoy every day um, because you know you never know when it's going to be your last as a footballer. We've, we've got very short careers, so you know I, I I don't take anything for granted ever in in the game. You know, I enjoy every day coming into training and, and games and stuff. So you know it's it's not been like that at all for me. You know it's okay. It's been a bit stop start. It's been different. Um, obviously with no fans at all um, this season. Um, obviously games stopping and starting. Now we've got an overload of fixtures, so it is it is a you know we we're going into an unknown really doing what we're doing this season. So uh, you know, but for me, you know, it's, we're just lucky to be able to do what we do and be allowed by the government to carry on playing football and and do what we enjoy. And you know, um, we're grateful for being allowed to do that. You touched on it there, the, the overload of fixtures. You personally, you played so many minutes 
uh, over the last few few games and then this mm-hmm. calendar year. Um, we're in the in the midst of this Saturday Tuesday schedule now. Just how physically draining is it as a player? Yeah, it's hard work. Um, it is, you know. I'm not going to lie. It does take its toll on your body, um, especially the older you get. But uh, but yeah, you know, it's it's like you say. Like I said before, I'm grateful to be a footballer. You know, I've worked really hard to get here, and I want to play as many possible games as I can. Um, but there's a fine line between playing when you're not a hundred percent. You know, at the end of the day, the team's the most important part of the game. Do you know what I mean? It's not individuals. You know, it's not about me going and playing every single game in a season and. And giving six out of tens every week, you know, five out of tens every week. I, you know, I'd rather play twenty-five and give you ten out of ten every week. You know what I mean? Be fresh and be ready. And I think, uh, you know, we've got the squad here at the minute that you know we're just getting used. It's going to get utilised over the next uh, two months. But uh, like you say, I think being fresh as a footballer, you do yourself an injustice if you kind of just play games for the sake of playing them and you're not really at your best. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, Colin, appreciate your time. Good luck at the weekend. Thank you very much, mate. Alright, Connor, how you doing, mate? Good how day. you doing, your eyes? I'm alright, mate. Could do with an haircut. I know, know that wig's coming on, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you about um, um, obviously last season you were, were part of a team that had, I think, the second best defensive record in the league and it had the second top goals in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, that's changed somewhat. The defence has stayed the same, it's still the best, but the goals haven't quite come in. I just wanted to know why you think. The club hasn't been as potent up front this year as they were last. Um, it's a tough one, really, because uh, you know we, we we kind of played the same way this season that we did last. Um, obviously, I think losing Cal early on in the season, you know, we we've, we've lost you know 10, 10, 15 goals through Cal straight off the bat. Um, like you say, obviously Wes, the situation with Wes and the COVID stuff, you know, we've lost another ten goals there in Wes and. You know, you start talking about these players, and they all—all all these goals start adding up. And um, like you say, you know, new lads have come in. You know, everyone's kind of tried to do, done their part, chipped in with the goals. Um, but you can't really put a finger on it, to be honest with you. I don't know whether it's the way teams set up against us tactically, or is it we're just lacking a bit of confidence in front of goal, like like that, you know, that killing, you know, that killing at your edge you could get when you're in goal and you're just banging them in for fun. It's kind of like the pressure's there, so we've got to score. Where I think if we just chill out and relax and, and play our natural game, I think the goals will start flowing eventually again, and we've just got to make sure we keep it tight at the back until that happens. Um, in terms of the, the, the squad, the, the, the meeting that the players held last week, what kind of things were, were being said? Um, just about like, you know, it's, it's all about keeping standards high off the pitch as well as on the pitch, you know. Um, Training's a massive thing in football, and I don't think many people realise outside of football how big it is. And you know, you've got to keep lads on it every day. And um, we were talk, you know, we, we went into about you know our performances have been over the last couple of games and stuff. And it was a real honest chat. And I think if you can't be honest with your own teammates, then you're going to go nowhere. You need that trust and that bond to be able to be honest. And sometimes honesty it hurts, and it's, people don't like hearing it, but. In certain times of, of seasons and, and games, people need to be told this, that, and the other. So, uh, but everyone took it on board, and it was real, a real positive, uh, positive chat. I, I was going to say, have you been surprised by some of the criticism aimed at the, uh, aimed at the team of late? Given that if you look at the form since the turn of the year, it's actually I think three defeats in fourteen games or whatever. But obviously, mm. you're just in short blocks, aren't you? So, yeah. I, I just wonder whether you thought the criticism was harsh or do you acceptable or. I think it's I think it's good. I think uh, it, it motivates, especially myself. Um, if I ever get any critics towards me, I, I, it, it kind of motivates me to give it the old like. Oh, I'll, I'll show you. You know, you want to you want to talk about that, or you want to talk about this. I'll, I'll show you that it can be done. Um, but you know, it, it adds a little bit of pressure, maybe unfairly, on certain players. Um, but it's it's a tough one, really, because we're in a we're in a, a sport and we're in a business where everyone's got an opinion. And if you you know if you can't handle that opinion and you can't take it on the chin and, and roll with it then you know just get out of the kitchen if you can't handle the heat kind of thing do you know what I mean so uh, you know for me personally I quite I quite like seeing bad things said about me because it eggs me on do you know what I mean do you know what I mean like it's don't get me wrong I wouldn't want to see it every day <laughs> but you know the odd one here and the odd one there it does spur you on to to you know really go like look I'll show you now. 
Um, do you think some of it has weighed a little bit heavy on the new some of the new players? Because obviously the demands at, at Notts County are absolutely massive, aren't they? I mean, yeah. I mean, you discussed how big the club is, it is particularly yeah. in, in the National League and even in mm-hmm. League Two, League One. Yeah, I remember a few when the new lads came in at the start of the season. You know, obviously I'd I'd been here for a season, and I said something like, you know, they will demand, you know, the very best week in week out. You know, you can't be giving tens one week and two's the next. You know, you've got to be consistently performing for such a big club. Um, but yeah, like you say, it's it's been hard for you know, especially some of the foreign lads that have come over and stuff. You know, we, it, you know I, I wouldn't. I'm a family man myself. I'm a home bird. I like being around my friends. I like being around my family all the time. So for them to come over and in the situation that the world's in at the minute and you know locked away and not being able to socialize or stuff like that it, it does make it a lot difficult like so but there's a settling in period at any club and I would you know I'd like to think now we're halfway through the season I'd like to think that settling time's over and you know you you, you go in I had a little bit of a settling time myself when I first come you know it took me you know four or five weeks to really you know get myself cemented in the team and settle down and put the performances together but I think that time's over now. I think we need to be looking at getting consistent performances on a consistent basis as a team and as individuals. Uh, and, and just finally, um, from me, I mean, in terms of the, of Callum Roberts this year, um, mm-hmm. how much of, of a bigger miss has he has he actually been? Well, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like you say, obviously with the goals and stuff and stuff like this. Cal's not only a goal scorer, but he's a creative spark. You know, he he can he can occupy two or three players at once, which frees up other players and stuff and. Uh, you know, like you say, Cal is a diamond, a diamond dozen, do you know what I mean? You don't really see players like that, like you get picked up from Blythe and he, he's going to go on to have a real good career, Cal, you know, he's he's you know he's a real good player and I think we just missed his uh, creativity and like you say, it's, it occupies more players in, in the team and then it frees up other players. So he's been a big miss, but like you say, hopefully he's on the road to recovery now and, you know, hopefully, well, I think we'll see him before the end of the season, I wouldn't worry about that. And, and just, I'm sorry, I will disappoint my, my final question. Lewis yeah. Nair, have you had a chance to see him in training yet? And what can you tell us about him? He's very fast, I'll tell you that. Is, is he the quickest in the squad, do you think, already? Probably second after me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, 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 jokes. Lewis already said you, you're quite quick over a long distance. Is he short distance or long distance? Ah, long distance. I'm a bit like the Titanic, mate. <laughs> Once I get going, I just can't stop. <laughs> but um, but no, uh, yeah, no, he's he's coming and he's he's looked sharp. Do you know what I mean? It's it's a big step up for him from from where he's come from. You know, coming out of full time football to part time and coming back into full time. And like you say, it's it's not counting in. It's a it's a big club and there will be pressure on him. But hopefully he'll thrive on that. But, but I've seen him in training. He looks very sharp and like you say, another another feather in the cap. Top man. Listen, mate, all the best for the weekend. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Ethan? Hi, how are you? How are you doing? You okay? Um, following the comeback on Tuesday night, do you think you can take that momentum into Yeovil again on Saturday? Yeah, 100%. I, I think, personally, you know, when you come back and, and draw the game like that after being two goals down and, you know, not performing how we would like to perform on the night, I think it gives you confidence to know we've dug in deep, we've managed to get the points and... You know, if we go home in on Saturday, seven points out of nine, two away games, you know, it's a, it's a good uh, points haul for the week. Um, how was the comeback without the fans? Because normally they're the ones that start the comeback. Yeah, um, obviously the thing is, after the game you come back, we've got a point, yeah, it's, you know, but it still feels like a loss, you know, we, we, we want to go and win games of football, we want to win every game we possibly can, so, you know, you look at it, we've salvaged a point, well done pat on the back and then let's move on to Saturday and make sure we follow up with a good performance and a, and three points and like you say the week would have been a, a decent week then for us uh, You've been at the club since August 2019 and about a year of that now has been through lockdown and without the fans has that been a big challenge for you personally? Yeah like I've, I've said from day dot when I signed there like the fans were, were a massive reason of of me coming, do you know what I mean? They get five, six, seven thousand through the gate here. It's you know, it's why we play football. It gives you that adrenaline rush. It gives you that uh, extra momentum, that motivation to to perform. And and like you say, it has been difficult. Um, I wouldn't say any of us are getting used to it. You know, and, and the quicker the fans get back, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. What are you looking forward to doing when lockdown eases? Um, 
I'm just looking forward to going and um, going out and having. I like eating out. I like having nice, uh, nice meals out. I've seen my little girl, out, my my partner and stuff. So, just uh, just the normal things that we took for granted really before all this lockdown happened. Uh, and like you say, I think we can start seeing a bit of the light at the end of the tunnel at the minute. So, uh, fingers crossed, we can get back to normal as soon as possible. I believe you were born in Wrexham, weren't you? Yeah, I was born in Wrexham. Um, yeah. But you played for Chester. So, how has the takeover of Wrexham been? for you from your perspective? I think it's only good. Uh, obviously, I'm Wrexham born um, and Welsh, so uh, you know I've seen the, that club struggle for, for many years coming up through the through the ranks in football. It's a it's a big club and like you say, uh, they've got good owners there now. It seems like they're going to you know, do well in the future, so all the best to them, like you say, and uh, let's crack on. Uh, lastly, sorry, um, how far do you think the squad can get this season? For me, I had a com- I did press. I think back in November, and I kept kept all these questions about Torquay being fifteen points ahead and all this that and the other. And people are saying, "Oh, the league's done in November." Now people are saying the league's done in with twenty odd games to go. Um, for me, you know, the, the the main aim of the the, the campaign is to win the league. Um, and until that mathematically un- impossible, then we won't stop trying to win it. Um, obviously, you've got the safety blanket of the playoffs, um, but. The main aim for us is, as a group of players and management staff and the team, you know, we're, we're going for the top spot. Like, and we've had a little bit of a ropey run over the last month or so, but you know, every team has it, and hopefully, we can come out the end of it and we're still picking up points, and we can keep it on the coattails of then teams that are above us. And then when we hit form ourselves, and we can catch them up. So you and the squad all believe it's all still to play for this season. One hundred percent, yeah. There's too many games to play. There's too many points to be played for to. Uh, be calling anything off so far you know we're, we're, we're going to be right up there and we're going to battle until like you say it's mathematically impossible for us to to win the league but for me personally I'm, I'm confident we can push up and, and have a real challenge